evening. It's New Year's Eve and it's party night, but not here. I'm parked just outside of Glossop, near the Torside Reservoir. The intention tomorrow is to go up Bleak Low Hill and there's a few things to look at up there when we get there. So that's tomorrow. As I say, on the sign out there, it did say no overnight parking, but it is New Year's Eve. So I doubt I'm going to get many problems. So all there is left for tonight is the same old, same old. Watch a couple of videos and get some sleep and we'll see you in the morning. Good morning. I know it said it was cold the other day, but today it's cold. It's eight o'clock and it's New Year's Day. Happy New Year, everybody. I'm just walking along the higher path near the Torside Reservoir and we're going to be going up there today so I need to get warmed up first we're just ascending out of the valley now we've got a better view of the Torside Reservoir in the distance there I believe this is the Longdendale Trail or at least part of it and as it goes up the, up the hillside it actually joins the Pennine Way somewhere up there. Later on on the trail there's a, an old crash site, an old plane crash site which uh, I'd like to go and visit and there's a few standing stones and things like that so it should be quite interesting. Okay it's started to get considerably steeper we're officially on the Pennine Way now as you can see the Reservoir has disappeared into the background there and uh, it's onward and upward. Just a quick shot of the valley and the stream running down the middle there and obviously the reservoir a little bit higher up. I don't know what it's going to be like when we get on the top there because I think it's fairly flat and the wind's going to be mental so we might have to wait till we get to the other side before we start again. Starting to get a little bit more edgy. Don't try this at home, kids. I'm never doing that again. Well, it's definitely worthy of the name Bleak Low. It's proper bleak up here. Just stop by this little stream for a bit of a breather. I think I'm about three quarters of the way to the crash site. It's, uh, there's, no, there's nobody here. I've not seen anybody at all today. Very bleak. Now, the, the whole route is about 12 miles. And I know I said I wasn't going to do 12 miles again, but when I get to where I'm going, I'll decide then whether I'm going to just double back and make it about eight miles because it is very cold, like I keep saying. Hopefully that will have captured that. A white hair. I knew I knew they were up here, but I didn't think I was going to see. Well, you know, I didn't think I was going to see one. But you can see our uh, storage and that you know get made up and everything because it, it was weird it, you know it's the solitude in that up here and then suddenly that to appear out in the middle of nowhere it was a bit weird chasing that bloody air has got me all out of sorts i've lost my sense of direction now i've just took shelter near these stones for a bit because it it's getting really cold now and I'm trying to triangulate between those stones there, these that are that, and some that are over in the distance over there. 
but I'm, I, I'm, I'm losing north. I, well, I haven't, because I've got a compass out. But it says north's over there, but I could have sworn it was over there. It's moved. Unfortunately, now with the wind is the way it is, these sets of stones are the only places I can really film from because the wind noise is so loud. Uh, I still need to go further that way. It's getting really cold now, and uh, I think I'm just going to need to try and wrap up and uh, try and concentrate on where I'm trying to get to. Because if I stop anymore, I'm going to freeze. Um, so hopefully the next film will be at the site. See you in a bit. Well, I'm here, fellas. And uh, it's surreal. Just it looks like almost the whole plane's just still here, broken up. It's speechless, really. Spreads out. I don't know how much you get in there. But it sort of spreads out right from bits over there. I mean, there's bits scattered all around when you, as you're approaching this main site. Well, so the main bits of the fuselage are over there. And then it scatters all down there. And then I don't know if you can see the landing gear and the front engine scatter over there. So we're going to take a look over there. What a place. It's like that's landing gear or something like that. Or some sort of suspension leg. I don't know if they weren't the same as cars. Might have done back then. And then over here. It looks like it might have an engine even. Yeah, that looks like one of the wheels there, look. Crosses and that. Yeah, it's one of the wheels. in that place around and I think I'm assuming this is the engines to be back on a path again of sorts because when you're uh, when you're out in the middle of that marsh land and the mist starts rolling in you start losing a sense of direction and uh, it can get quite scary um, particularly just after I've been to that side that, with the plane and that because that in itself is a bit eerie. Um, but anyway, I've got a path all the way, well, I say path. It's like a sort of rivery, watery, streamy path. But there's something to follow back to the van. So I'll see you when I get back. In very interesting walk. It's been very cold today. I've not been out in these sort of temperatures before. There's a lot of ice about and I slept a couple of times. It was quite dangerous and it, it does make you think, you know, you've got to be careful, especially when you're on your own. Um, the white hairs, I saw two of them in the end, they, they were a, a turn up for the books and a, just out of nowhere. And it was a little bit weird, as I said earlier. A bit Alice in Wonderland sort of thing, and then and then as, as as I think I said earlier, I went to follow one, 
to try and get a decent photograph and uh, and sort of got lost and lost all sense of direction so it was all a bit weird uh, and then on to the, the the crash site which was odd you know because it's so desolate up there and you know some of the metal on that that's left is like brand new almost it's still shiny in that and it's 1948 I think it was it went down so it's just after the war and there was 13 American chaps killed in it. Um, I don't know if it was outright, but November time, I think it was. You, I don't think you'd last long up there. Um, but anyway, that's that. Thanks for coming with us, and we shall see you next time.